wanted to do a longer term review of the Forza 350 uh, in English because a lot of the videos are not uh, available in English. Um, so I've done about 3,500 kilometres on mine and uh, so far I'm very happy. Um, if you watch most of the other videos, the, the sort of um, the, the, the road tests that they have, you'll see all the specs and you, you, know, you know all the tyre sizes and etc. Um, etc. Et but what I wanted to sort of tell you is uh, what it's like to actually live with the bike. So I'll run you over my bike and uh, I'll explain uh, how I'm getting on with it. Um, so the, the keyless entry in my opinion works very well uh, once you get used to it um, I just keep my key in a little pocket on my jacket in there don't need to really worry about it and um, the only time you really uh, use the key itself is uh, if you've got one of these integrated lock boxes from Honda um, the key goes in there to remove the box but it also has a small button there which when you press it a little solenoid will open up the top box where you've got ample room for two full face helmets no problem at all just snap shut nice and easy backrest for the pillion passenger works very well um, opening the seat press the button lifts up plenty of room in there for two full face helmets no problem at all and well pretty much any kind of uh, luggage you can think of there is a little extra bit of space in there never had to use it yet but if you did uh, have something for example you wanted to tuck up out of the way and you could see that handy little bit of extra uh, space uh, there was a little fixture on here to hold your um, paperwork for your scooter uh, and I just uh, removed that with a with a knife just to get it out of the way it's a bit a bit annoying rear suspension is adequate for um, for one person and luggage uh, if you have two people on it and luggage as well, I think you'd be getting to the limits of what is then uh, comfortable if you're not on a road which is uh, super uh, soft and, uh, and non-bumpy. Uh, the, the position on the bike, um, on, the, on the pillion, uh, seems to be very good, uh, as does the, the rider itself, the rider position. The screen, as most of you will know now, is uh, adjustable in height. Um, that's it on its full extension. Um, I'm not particularly tall. I'm not six foot for sure. Um, and I think if you were six foot, you'd need to get a slightly taller screen or they do a little piece that you can add on to the top, a little deflector up there. I think if you were really tall, you'd probably want that. Wind protection is pretty good. Um, mirrors, the visibility in the mirrors is pretty good. You see your elbows, um, but that's pretty normal on any bike. That's what that's the sort of view you get um, behind you. It's a bit sort of like this, both sides. Uh, the dash is very. Um, it's got a lot of information. That you, it's got all the information that you need and none of the information that you don't need. Apart from why you, you'd ever need to know your battery voltage, yeah, don't know, but that's fine. Controls, there's an awful lot of controls on your left uh, left hand, and uh, I think that that button down there should be the horn, and that button down there should be your second info button, because quite often, certainly when I first got the bike, you go to grab that rather than the horn. Um, the button on this side is to turn the traction control off there, that little button there. Screen up and down, lights, high and low, flash. Info A will cycle through, if you can see that. 
your trips and info B will show you your total mileage range and consumption whilst you're riding uh, one of the problems on this bike which I've noticed is the fuel cap here um, gets kind of caught look can you see there you go three attempts and then it popped up I added a bit of hot glue just inside there because it gets caught on this lip um, and that has almost solved the problem uh, cubby hole in there these I think on all bikes this little flap is pretty rubbishly built but you've got a lot of storage in there you can put a sort of 500 ml bottle of water in there and your wallet and your phone and your passport and two packets of tissues etc 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 so that's a lot of storage just up there and uh, really very useful as far as I'm concerned brakes um, more than adequate for a scooter that goes about 80 miles an hour um, if you're a scooter rider you know that front and rear brakes you have to use them you know the rear brake a lot more than you would on a motorbike in my opinion so when you combine the, the front and the rear it's perfectly adequate um, headlights I think the headlights are, are good enough for what they are um, and on dip beam I think that they're you know the LED is perfectly adequate on main beam I think it could be a bit better but ultimately it's good enough for a scooter that most people aren't going to use at night that often um, but your road uh, presence is good you know especially when you're sitting on it because it's very high up um, and you really do feel like you're riding a big motorbike uh, rather than a scooter uh, what else to say uh, the access for servicing is pretty easy these little um, floor plates come up they're just rubber uh, very easy just pull them off a couple of screws you've got a little cubby hole in there gets you can get to your um, most of your amenities pretty easy oil etc there's your oil filter down there it's pretty easy to just unscrew by hand I should think air filter in the air box so that's all very easy not sure about taking the rear wheel out but I don't suppose it's that difficult and to be honest with you for the prices that they charge you for servicing I wouldn't bother I would just do it myself um, so the only other thing I've added is this little beeline satellite navigation system um, which runs off of your phone on a little app um, it's very good in my opinion um, perhaps the only downfall of it is if you're going along on a motorway and the motorway divides into two or three or four different directions you can quite easily miss your junction but other than that I've done about a thousand kilometers with it and found it to be pretty pretty good um, you know especially around town yeah on the motorways overall pretty good it's not going to be as good as your uh, Google Maps app on your phone but I think it's a lot uh, neater sitting up there on the dash like that um, than having your phone dangling around so this is my YouTube video for the 2001 Honda Forza 350 um, as far as I'm aware that's apart from it hasn't got heated grips apart from that it's pretty much top spec um, with the top box and it's got this function here which I've never used where you can control via Bluetooth all these uh, functions on your phone uh, I've got an Apple phone so it's not compatible with uh, my phone so I haven't used it um, talking about riding it um, I think that acceleration wise it has more than enough uh, it goes fast enough to sit on a motorway uh, I think about an hour and a half sitting on it is about as much as I want to do at any one time without stopping for a stretch but then I think that's the same when I had a GS Adventure I 
about two hours on that is going to be enough for anybody um, without a little 10 minute break or a stretch. Um, so overall I am very pleased with uh, this bike and I would recommend it to anybody really. Um, I think it's a good uh, uh, step before you want to get into motorbikes. Um, I think it's a good step if you've had motorbikes for a long time and you want to have, the, have a rest and uh, not have to change gear. Um, I think if you've got uh, a long distance to go, it's great for that. If it's, if it's a short distance, I go to the shops on it all the time, put all the shopping under the seat, brilliant for that. And just as an all round motorbike, I think you can't really beat this. Uh, I know the Yamahas are, are also very good, but I think they've, Honda have really, really thought about this bike and what people are gonna use it for and they've got it pretty much spot on. Uh, as I say, heat your grips uh, if you're going to go touring, bit of, bit of a bigger screen, givey do one, or jivy or whatever they are. And other than that, I think uh, you're just good to go. Um, and that is pretty much my review of the, uh, of the bike. Any questions, uh, please uh, put in the comments down below and I'll, uh, I'll answer them. Many thanks, have a great day.